Cue the music. Fly me to the moon. Yes, that is right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, for our Gen Z One Minute or Less movie review, we're going to be going over Fly Me to the Moon. The story of this film is about a advertiser that gets invited over to NASA to pump up the energy in order to keep the funds rolling. Going throughout it, there was so much that they didn't go over in the trailer, which actually kept the movie exciting for me. Being an Apple film, the sound is absolutely amazing. The visuals, absolutely stunning. And seeing Channing Tatum in a nerdy position is also very interesting. And Scarlett Johansson did some great emotional acting. Based on the trailers, I I didn't think I was really going to like this movie, but it was actually really good, and yes, it's funny, but not laugh out loud funny. Thanks to AMC for showing us this film early. Fly Me to the Moon does release on July 12th. Overall, I think I'm going to have to give the movie a solid 6.9. It's great, there's nothing to complain about, but also nothing super amazing about it. I'd say it's well worth the watch, but don't go out of your way to go see it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Pshew! daddy -o. bravo! What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to yet another Gen Z One Minute or Less movie review! daddy -o stars Sean Penn and Dakota Johnson and almost only shows them the whole film. And... Seriously, the whole movie was shot inside of a car. Back to me! I gotta say, the shots were absolutely stunning, the way they used mirrors and just nice tactics in a car to actually give you that depth and feeling like you're there and showing their emotions and their expressions so well. That might also be just because they're great actors. As for well the movie goes, there's some great comedy in there talking about New York stuff. And the film got a way more deep and in-depth and emotional than I thought it was going to. And that turned out to be great. It's simple, it's creative, and probably very hard to pull off. But in this case, they actually pulled it off perfectly well. In fact, so well that I'm willing to give it a 7.2. I've never seen a film quite like this, and that's why it gets that. Thank you for watching. I hope you all have a great 4th of July and we'll see you all in the next one. Come back tomorrow for the Despicable Me review. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to yet another Gen Z one minute or less movie review. Last night for the 4th of July, I went and checked out Despicable Me 4. And right off the bat, I gotta say, it beats Inside Out 2. There's constant humor, there's constant action, and there's just so much more entertainment value out of it. The voice acting was phenomenal with such a great cast. The animations look so smooth and clean, almost a realistic but not kind of look. And dare I say, the story was quite intriguing. You follow Gru and the family as they have to relocate due to somebody figuring out where they live. And Gru has to make the decision of becoming a villain once more or staying his new good self with his family. There's only one thing I'd say I didn't really like. I went and saw the film in IMAX, of course. And the problem is, is the audio was only in stereo and not in surround sound. Not a huge gripe, but what can you do? If you were thinking about saying it, I definitely say you gotta go see Despicable Me 4. I'm going to be giving it a 7.3. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. I'm sorry to inform you, my fans, my only fans, that I took down all my content because I decided it's time for yet another Gen Z one minute or less movie review. Last night I saw Maxine. I think you should take the three X's, put them right through my heart because the movie last night was absolutely okay. Let me explain. Mia Goth is back yet again as her third time within the X series of movies. We follow Maxine as she transitions from being an adult film star into an A-list Hollywood celebrity. Along the way, we have some uh-oh stabbies. The cinematography is great. The shots look good. I just feel like it looks too clean for looking vintage, if you get what I'm saying. I was really not into the audio because a lot of the vocals got covered up by other sounds and you really couldn't hear what they're saying a lot of times. It wasn't super clear and audible. And no cap, that's the gist of it. On God for real, for real, no cap, I think I'm gonna have to give this film a solid 5.0. Nerd. Great concept, but not really good writing. The movie flowed so awkwardly, and it made me the whole time go, don't do that, don't do that, or do this, do this. And she just never did. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. 17 days ago marked the 30th anniversary of Lion King. To honor such a momentous occasion, Disney has done us the honor of re-releasing the Lion King in theaters once again. Shh, the movie's about to begin. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to yet another exciting Gen Z one minute or less movie review. We're talking about the highest grossing animated hand-drawn film of all time, grossing close to a billion dollars at the worldwide box office. This film is older than me, so I technically can't entirely judge it. But what I can say is, I absolutely love the way it looks being hand-drawn. Every frame is different, and the use of the multi-plane camera really creates the cool depth, and there's many great voice actors in it, and it's all superbulous. I kind of wish Disney would go back to their roots and start doing more hand-drawn films. Okay. 
Hakuna Matata. What an amazing soundtrack this film had. If The Lion King was a person, it would have a level 10 yeah. yacht and be the wrestler. No cap, on God for real for real, I'm gonna have to give The Lion King a 7.9. Oh. oh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Ho oh. ho! Well, howdy y'all, and welcome back to yet another exciting Gen Z one minute or less movie review. The Rise in an American Saga has us following, well, lots of people. There's not just a single story to this. There's multiple stories, and supposedly there's supposed to be four parts. Mm. The second part got pushed back because not enough people were actually wanting to see the first part. Considering that this part alone is over three hours long, and there's three extra parts after this, it's kind of hard to get into it. It was kind of confusing. There's like so many characters and so many things, I couldn't even memorize a single person's name or exactly what was going on. Not learning a name, I guess that makes me a Gen Z. It is cool though, because you get to follow some cowboys, some American Indians, and just some humble people making their way across America. I personally don't think I've ever seen a Kevin Costner film, and it feels good to bring back a good Western. The cinematography was absolutely stunning with the gorgeous backgrounds. If I were to wrangle up a score for this here film, I would have to give it a solid 6.3. Thank you! We'll see you all in the next one. Bravo. Just two days ago, I was hiding in this exact room due to tornado. And somehow a couple hours ago, I was in a theater watching a movie about twisters. Some may put it up to coincidence, Bruh. but I think whoever's making these movie things is also controlling the weather in order to promote their new film. But then again, I was absolutely astonished with how breathtaking this picture was. Seriously, I'm not even gonna get into the story because you need to go to the theaters and witness this suspenseful drama in person. I can for sure comment on the performances of both Daisy Edgar Jones and Glenn Powell. They had me locked in due to their cohesive energy and how just dramatic their performance was. As far as video, I'm not a huge fan of handheld autofocus footage, especially with a budget of close to $200 million. Nice. No complaints on the audio. Everything was crisp and clear. And with the help of Skywalker Ranch, you always know the audio is going to be tactile and boisterous. I would say it's even a crime to be delivering this film and giving it anything less than a 9.1. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Arcadian was a travesty, and the cage is not on the top of my list, so I was kind of afraid to see this picture. Reluctantly, Long Legs brings great color grading and amazing set detail, and the constantly moving camera was a cherry on top, as well as an entertaining story that was written a little funky and unrelatable, but still very captivating. We are in the 90s watching rookie introvert FBI agent Lee Harper as she is to find the cause behind a decades-long case of murder-suicides. Harper played by Makeup and Roll really drew me in with a performance that was just so cold. The vocal audio was fluid until Cage came on screen. In fact, I wasn't even interested in his character at all. Like, why did he have to be Michael Jackson White? <laughs> Luckily, a few T-Rex tracks made its way into the film, and the backing tracks also reminded me of old B-movies with nice striking staccatos. All around, a solid, refreshing horror film from the likes of Osgood Perkins. Long Legs deserves a Gen Z movie review rating of a smooth 8.0. Thanks for watching. Last night I saw an AMC screen unseen. And if I was forced to either watch Kneecap again or lose a kneecap, I would definitely be watching Kneecap again. The West Belfast rap group plays themselves throughout this whole documentary, comedy, drama style film about the formation of their group. For a couple of guys that have never acted before, they really scratched my earlobes. Speaking of ears, call me racist, but it was harder than I am right now to understand what they were saying even when the movie was in English. But the soundtrack was absolutely California wildfire. And honestly, the movie was shot really cool. It was like a music video. And after doing some research, it turns out the film's director also directed the Guilty Conscience music video. Kneecap was previously shown at Sundance in January. And it will be re-released into theaters by Sony Pictures classics on August 2nd. Kneecap earned itself a Gen Z one minute or less movie review rating of a nice 6.9. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Most horror films are absolutely flops and this summer's horror film Oddity is not odd at all. The first thing I noted, see a character walking at a side angle just like this. And now all of a sudden, you're on this side and the lighting is completely different. And don't even let me get started on the story. It's basic and we've seen it a thousand times. From the trailers, I thought there was gonna be more scariness to it, but it was all jump scares. I got an absolute kick out of this. There was one other person in the theater. I watch him walking with a big soda pop, a beer, popcorn, and I think a burger. So this dude spent at least $50. I don't know, maybe a third of the way through. He leaves, the film ends. Just saw. Oddity. Supposedly it was so bad, but the person that was sitting here left. If that isn't a sign to go see this movie, then I don't know what is. Oddity garners itself. A Gen Z one minute or less movie review rating of 3.6. Oh yeah, and the music was like soft background pads. Made by somebody probably in their basement just hitting keys until it sounded good. See you all 
in the next one. <laughs> Opening day, I find myself alone in a theater viewing The Fabulous Four. It's just too bad for these gilfs. No judgment. But they did have the same release date as Deadpool. Actually, it wouldn't even matter because they have a completely different target audience. Yikes. Is a word I was surprised to actually not hear in a movie that was written like this. Also, the cameras look soft and a skibbity in the creativity department. Just like another great film from earlier this year, it's based in the Florida Keys. Roadhouse. At least this film has a stoner, a grower, a shower, and of course a doctor. I feel like I've seen this film a lot recently. It's been played at least once each year and we've already had one this year with Kathy Bates. I may not be the target audience of The Fabulous Four, but it still is going to get a Gen Z One or Less movie review rating of a 3.5. Make sure to come back tomorrow for my late Deadpool review.